Hello, my name is Kevin Webb with the Valor Division within Mentor, a Siemens business. I want to welcome you to this presentation on the Expedition DFM, powered by Valor NPI. Over the next few minutes, we'll get familiar with this design for manufacturing Avia. The new product introduction process spans both the design and manufacturing of printed circuit boards and requires clear and complete communications between the two. Mentors Expedition DFM and Valor NPI applications help you accelerate your new product introductions. To improve any process, you always look to shift the actions and decisions to the earliest possible stage. With PCB design for manufacturing, best practices are to perform DFM concurrent with the PCB layout process. That is why we have developed an Expedition DFM analysis tool powered by Valor NPI. This allows the designers to get access to the DFM analysis in an environment they are accustomed to using. There is no training required or different software tools to learn. In this short demo, we're not going to touch on the setup of the DFM rules, but the designers using Expedition DFM are going to use the same rules set up and maintained by your DFM expert. You can easily manage these rules from the main Valor MPI application through the tool that we call Analysis Definition Manager. This is where your DFM engineer can define your intelligent constraint values and stages based on the manufacturing processes associated with the attributes specific to the PCB design being analyzed. Let's jump over to Mentor Expedition and see how easy it is to perform the Expedition DFM analysis on your design. First, let's take a quick look at the board stack up as it plays an important role of passing intelligent information to the Valor NPI analysis engine. As you can see, the stack up includes material and dielectric thicknesses and copper weights, along with technology types such as prepreg versus core. So there's nothing to do here but let the system use this information to assign the desired constraint values. Now let's execute the Expedition DFM tool. This will give us access to the classification sets where we can then set the additional parameters such as severity level, the stage you wish to run on this design. As I mentioned earlier, stages are managed from within the Analysis Definition Manager and are based on assigning specific constraints to a stage to focus the required constraints needed within the specific step of the design process. This approach is used to fine tune your DFM constraints to best meet your analysis needs. In this example, I'll set both the fabrication and the assembly stage. And below the stage area is the settings that you would set to perform assembly merge to import your Valor Parts Library information. This allows you to use the more comprehensive pin contact information coming from the VPL for solder validation and other assembly DFM analysis. Once you've made your settings, we're ready to run the analysis. After the analysis has completed, you will see the ready indicator at the bottom of the Expedition DFM GUI. Now you can review the results through the Expedition Hazard Explorer just as you would any other Expedition constraint result. We'll start towards the top as we review a couple fabrication type checks. In this example, we have a CAD short. From the hazards window, you can see the severity setting, measured value, limit value, which is the constraint value we set within the classification set, the violation layers, and both the elements and nets involved with the issue. And of course, the standard column associated with issue acceptance. Once we select an issue, the system automatically changes to the proper layer and zooms into that issue. And once we've zoomed into this issue, we can easily correct the problem, then move on to the next one. Let's jump down to another fabrication type check called via annular ring. As you can see, we're looking for an annular ring of 3.4 mils, while we have eight vias that are measuring only two mils. We could fix this directly from within Expedition, but maybe we want to accept these issues, so we'll go ahead and select all eight and apply accept selected hazards. 
This marks these issues such that they can be hidden in subsequent DFM analysis for this design. In staying with our fabrication checks, let's now review the slivers that were reported. The severity for this sliver is indicated as red, while the measured value of the sliver is 1.28 mils. Our constraint is looking for at least 3.4 mil spacing, and this problem was found on signal layer 4. Copper sliver width is the narrowest width the resist material can be without negatively impacting the yield. Copper slivers are the side effect of the PCB manufacturing process in which the chemical etching removes the copper from the laminated material. Having this too narrow can cause acid traps as well as shorts through the fabrication process. Having brought this to the designer's attention, they could quickly fix the issue and move on to the next one. Now I'd like to jump down to review a couple assembly type checks. Since we merged the bomb and imported the VPL components, let's look at one of the solder validation results related to pin to pad relationship. Here's a package type of R underscore large with a heel issue that does not meet IPC level B solder requirements. In this case, the spec requires the heel copper pad to fully cover the heel of the component contact area. In this example, the pad is 2.78 mils short of meeting that requirement. Let's look at one more issue by taking a look at component placement analysis. And as we look at this discrete 1210 SOIC non-leaded to non-leaded, the system measured 9.84 mils while I'm looking for 12.75. This may have not been noticed in the standard component to component checks, but since we imported in the VPL components, we have the true component size of each device to improve the overall component to component placement, which of course is a big advantage that the VPL import process brings to the DFM analysis. Of course, we would have to make the decision whether to fix this or accept it and move on. I also want to note that you can see down in the lower right corner the hazard description area where it shows the pictorial of the images of devices non-leaded to non-leaded view. I also want to point out that the analysis detected that this design was a microvia HDI design, so it ran both the microvia checks as well as the HDI checks that I have set up in this particular stage and classification set. Now that I've made a few updates to the design and accepted a few issues, I could simply rerun my analysis where it will remember all of my exceptions on subsequent analysis as well as remove the results that I fixed. And that wraps up the Expedition DFM module powered by Valor NPI. Expedition DFM is the best way for a PCB designer to optimize their design for manufacturing, all within the tool you are accustomed to using, Expedition.